In this clip, I answer a question about how to troubleshoot Docker Swarm networking and Docker DNS. All right, so Derek has a question. The best way to debug networking issues with Swarm overlay when the DNS resolver is not behaving as is. Um, let's see if you have any more info on this. Nope, I don't see anything else. Um, okay, so a couple of things to start out. The, the way that DNS works in Swarm with the default overlay networking is that it's running a, essentially a DNS daemon that's uh, namespaced to each container. So each container is getting different resolution, right? They're, they're getting different names. So that it's not using the local host file anymore. That was something we actually used way back years ago with Docker 1.9, I think, 1.8. Um, long time ago, four or five years ago at this point, probably. And so what you're really talking about is this DNS server, right? So you can always uh, do some troubleshooting with um, NSLOOKUP, DIG, and other utilities. Throw those in your containers. Um, let me uh, go to my browser and give you... You may know, know already some of this stuff, so I'm just going to tell you that. Anyway, NetShoot is a general um, network troubleshooting utility for Swarm and Kubernetes, and it's essentially just a container with a bunch of Linux tools in it. So you can get that. Uh, I'm going to post this in chat, so you can get that one. Um, uh, thanks, Ray. <laughs> and I, so the, the thing I do here is... <clears throat> The first thing you want to make sure is that your containers aren't caching DNS resolution. So this is a quirk in certain um, in certain setups. I'm trying to think out how to explain this. So let's say you're running a Node app or a Python app or something, and that app is doing DNS lookups in the app to find another thing. Uh, th and I don't have and I don't have this figured out for every language and every framework, but there is some issues with those applications and the way they look up DNS and th that whether or not they cache answers. So one of the challenges sometimes people have is they spin up their Node app, then later they spin up a new app while the Node app is still running. And, and, and I'm just picking Node, I'm picking on Node, but I don't know that Node has this issue. I'm just using it as an example. Um, and that app may not see that new DNS entry uh, because maybe it queried it before the container started up and Swarm won't answer for a DNS entry until the service is created, right? Like it doesn't know about a thing before there's a thing. So what happens is the app can cache those results at sometimes minutes or even longer and it won't see the new, it won't relook up the DNS entry. And ideally uh, in a world where we're dealing with containers and things are spinning up and down all the time, ideally our apps are just not caching. Like they just ask for every you know, or if there are caching, it's only for five or 10 seconds, something really, really, really short. So what's interesting is most of us have never had to worry about that because things were very persistent in the old days. They, they were slow to update. We just worked on regular TTLs for DNS. We didn't have to wet sweat it so much. But nowadays, when we're really talking about subs, uh, sometimes even sub second, but often sub minute or sub hour updates to things where DNS IPs are changing, DNS names are showing up that didn't previously show up. So that's step one is to make sure your app's not caching the stuff. That's why you want to use tools like NSLOOKUP and DIG to figure out, are these is, is it Swarm or is it my app that's having these problems with finding the DNS? The next step is that the way the DNS gets updated in Swarm is through the control plane. And that control plane is... Um, oops. The control plane is really... Uh, running something called a gossip network. And what that means is that these these different nodes can update each other. They don't all have to wait on the official... Um, they, they're, they're not necessarily all to one endpoint, like the manager that's active inside of the Swarm cluster. So at least that's how, the way I understand it. So this gossip network doesn't... Uh, it, so that's a firewall issue. And if you have certain ports open, the data plane, which is where your containers are all talking, will work. But the, if the control planes ports are not completely open uh, between all nodes, 
uh, and they 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 will have little intermittent issues like this where they cannot get the latest DNS updates for their own engine because essentially each engine on each node has its own is responding to the DNS queries. It's not like when you do a DNS query in a container that it's going to the swarm manager to get the answer. It's doing that in the local engine on that host. So I there's probably some tools in NetShoot and I actually make my own version of NetShoot. Let me uh, go back here. I make my own version of this, and I, I'm not sure if he actually has dig. Let me. No, he doesn't have dig in there. And I actually make my own, which probably needs to be a little updated. I forked his, and I have my own net shoot, and I think um, in mine. No, I don't have dig in there either. What did I add? I, I think I added in vim. Oh, you know what? It's not going to be... Uh, some of these are going to be under uh, different tool names underneath here. Well, crap. I don't remember what I added. Uh, <laughs> I could probably uh, look at blame and see what I what I did there. But anyway, I forked this. So you might want to fork the net shoot, add the utilities you need, that's my point I'm trying to make is you can make your own net shoot with your own tools. And he has uh, so many tools in there that I couldn't possibly use them all. Uh, but uh, let me back up here. So for instance, he's showing off uh, Linux. This is Linux performance stuff, not so much related to networking. Um, but he has started to put stuff in here for networking because on the Kubernetes side, networking is starting to get more and more complicated as we start dealing with different networking plugins, service mesh, stuff like that that's affecting all the networks. So I would invest, spend some time into this. So essentially checking firewall ports, and you can do that. Um, I'm just going to search for it because I'm pretty sure I'll get it right on the first link, second link. So I have a page here. If you're using Swarm, just make sure uh, that you're opening up all these ports, and I even have it in an AWS-friendly format. And you need to have all these ports open on all the nodes, right? So I actually break it out into managers and workers. So I would, step one, see whether or not it's your app or it's Swarm itself. Step two, look at the daemon logs of all the machines to see if they're getting any errors about communicating with each other. Step three, make sure that all these firewall ports are open. And step four, would you, we mean you, you have to start diving in deep to, is it all nodes? Is it just sometimes, you know, and essentially turning on the dash D and Docker daemon to do debugging and then looking at debugging logs. That's a whole nother area of troubleshooting that I won't unfortunately be able to do today. Um, but that's the level you're going to have to go to. So I would do all these easy things first before I started looking at things like Docker daemon debug logs. The nice thing about Swarm is that because it's built in, a lot of it's, you know, the logging and troubleshooting of it is really just troubleshooting Docker. Uh, really what you're trying to figure out is why does this engine that I'm on not resolve that DNS if that's in, in fact the actual issue? And it should be getting its updates from the rest of the swarm. Why is it not getting those gossip network um, things? There's actually a troubleshooting tool. Um, let me see if I can just Google for it and find it. Uh, Docker swarm. So there's a couple of things. Uh, troubleshooting methodology, I'll throw this one in here. This is an article from Docker on troubleshooting Swarm. May It may have some uh, insight for you, but what I was looking for, I think it's actually a tool that's been put into something else, but let me see if I can find it. Swarm. I keep so many bookmarks. Uh, Ooh, here we go. This is the one I was looking for. Mark Church. Um, yeah, page moved. Yeah, it's over in Lib Network now. That's right. All right. So I'm going to give you this one. And this one gets a little hot. This one gets a little in-depth. But essentially, it's uh, an interesting, deep-level troubleshooting tool for Swarm Networking. And yeah, that's going to get you... Once you start diving into that stuff, you start to become a Swarm Networking expert. <laughs> 
But uh, this is a potential tool that you can use. It's one of the tools that the Docker team created to help them troubleshoot things going on. So that hopefully, plus your the Swarm troubleshooting methodology page on the success site will get you farther down the road. That's all the info I have on that. So great question. Dive in deep into that answer. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to click subscribe and the notification bell if you want to know when I go live every week to talk about Docker and DevOps and take your questions. I also have other videos over here, or you could just go try to solve that Rubik's Cube you got at a conference last year.